to something obvious that you can put your hand on. And, and generally tomorrow, uh, the sun will come up, the circumstances will change, and you're, you're back, back on the go again. But this message isn't about being downcast. And if the downcast condition lingers for three or four days, we might say, you know, I've just been really discouraged this week. And, and, and the circumstances have lingered. And I haven't found a way to think about it that's getting me forward. And, and you can be discouraged. But if discouragement lingers and it becomes a pattern of thinking that is not specifically relative to any circumstance, but it's a more general outlook, that even when the circumstances have obvious, obviously changed, the blues have not left me, now I'm starting to get into um, what would be called depression. And, and I just want to say this. It's extremely serious because uh, depressive states uh, that continue become despair. Downcast is bad day. Discouragement is bad week or month. Uh, depression is, I don't know what's wrong and I can't seem to shake it. And despair is, everything's wrong and it's never going to change. And despair is what leads people to do desperate things and um, so it's a serious matter and let me just say that at the end of this message we're not going to sing um, we're going to actually have Dr. Higby um, uh, come up and answer some questions you can text them in uh, if you have questions while I'm preaching so I don't really get what you mean by just text your questions in and we're going to spend a little bit of time um, I'm opening a subject that I can't close in one message obviously and so we're going to I just take some questions uh, from you uh, at the end of this. And um, so 1 Kings 17 is, is kind of where I am. It says in verse 1, uh, Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishba, that there's a lot of ways that I can make that funny, but I have to keep moving, in Gilead said to Ahab, Ahab was the king, he was wicked, he was evil, the, he was leading the people in Baal worship. Gross idolatry, perversity, debauchery. I could fill in those blanks. I don't want to. It was dark and awful. Ahab was the king. And you think Ahab was bad? His wife, Jezebel, made her husband Ahab look like... Okay? So Jezebel was so evil. She was like 10x her wicked husband. Now, I just told you how great Elijah was, but this is going to kind of shock you. I uh, look at chapter. It's all like Good morning, good here. morning, good morning. I'm in my mobile office. How is everyone doing this morning? We'll get into that in a minute, but I want you to what you were listening to was Pastor James McDonald. I actually ran across him. The channel I watch often is Hillsong. Not sure if you guys are familiar with Hillsong. Pastor Brian Houston and his wife are the founders of that church and that ministry out of London. And I watch him, I watch that show, or that, that, that station often, it's a Christian station, and they have so many different speakers, and I didn't even realize, it's dark outside, you guys, you won't be able to even see me, but it's all good. I, okay, we're back. So I watch that show often. Listen! <laughs> Listen, I watch that show often, that station often, and I didn't realize there were so many pastors, so many awesome pastors, you guys, that I've never even heard about. The first time I saw Pastor Stephen Fritrick was on Hillsong. Um, oh, shucks, let me turn, I can't even tell if it's turned around or not. It's so dark. So, yeah, so I ran across Pastor James McDonald, him along with Jimmy Evans. Um, oh, I forgot another guy that comes on at 6.30 in the morning and they all preach teach on marriage so uh, of course i instantly fell in love with them and, and their message more so the god in them and the content and things that they were sharing so i i, I bought pastor mcdonald's teaching entitled unstuck oh my god he is very raw <laughs> he is extremely raw and some people will not be able to take him um he reminds me of a former pastor that i had so yeah, so I was up last night. Listen, you guys, I was feeling good too. I made some okra and shrimp. 
made a mac and cheese, some rice. You know, I just wanted to make sure my hubby has something to eat today. Unfortunately, we found out last night or yesterday evening that his uncle passed. And this is the fourth aunt or uncle that has passed within the last year. Within the last year, the uncle that passed last night, his brother just passed away six months ago. So we were up um, talking, but I was, you know, studying and doing my lessons, but I was still talking to him and dinner was on and, you know, it's about 11 o'clock and that's normal for me because I can go to bed 11, 12, get up five, no problem. But I just slept right on through the alarm was going off. He didn't hear the alarm. I didn't hear the alarm. And when I jumped out, when the alarm was still going off, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, it's 556. I thought it was in a dream. And to be honest with you, that was my biggest fear. If any of you have read the, the uh, book of Job, you know, Job had the biggest fear that his life would just go up into shambles, more or less. And my biggest fear during this challenge is, with, is one day I would sleep through um, prayer, sleep through, you know, corporate prayer or prayer in general. And that happened this morning. So I apologize to you all, uh, if those that were on the line those that were expecting but I pray and I really hope that you all still prayed uh, you still went through your lesson this morning you still did your devotion you read your scriptures um, and you got something out of it on this morning and that's all the more reason why um, thank you so much Camille I appreciate it that's all the more reason why you can't depend on people because people will fail you uh, and I was I was tired, Juanita. Juanita knows, you know, a few people know how much I do <clears throat> and to the magnitude I do it. And I was extremely tired, but I was determined to press my way. So I thank you all for just being understanding um, and realizing that I am a human person as much as some people think I'm a robot and I'm just the super... A superwoman I'm not so I appreciate your prayers just for continued strength um, for prayers for me to press and just listen just because I'm doing this challenge that does not mean that there are days I don't want to get up and I'm tired and now I just don't want to get up and pray I'm just gonna be honest with you so it's as much as it is a push for you it's a push for me as well uh, however I do understand that prayer is a discipline worship is a discipline I do enjoy being in God's presence um, you know but at the same time I'm a human being I'm a human being absolutely Camille and I feel so rested when I got up I'm like this is strange because I never feel like totally rested at 5 o'clock <laughs> but when I got up at 5.56 I felt rested and I should have automatically known something was wrong <laughs> because I didn't go I didn't get to bed till almost midnight um, but nonetheless I still wanted to come on but I pray you guys still went through your devotion this morning. I had so many things that I wrote down and I wanted to share with you all. And of course, I'm driving, so I won't be able to read them. But I still want to talk about some things as it relates to uh, sex because there's a chapter in my book. I talk about sex being overrated. And I was speaking in reference to, you know, many people think, you know, when you're single, you, you, you're free for all, Right free for all free to have sex free to well you're not free but you know those that are single and not believers are not uh, not applying the word of God when it talks about do not use your body for sexual immorality purposes uh, so you know you if you're in a relationship or what have you you have sex and a lot of people think that when you get married then then you're you and your husband are just going to be having sex every single day that is not the case. Um, however, sex is a very important uh, function, if I can say that, or or men, or what I want to what I want to call it, not a function, more say. It's very important. You guys, give me a word. I can't think right now. For you to do it in the marriage, it's, it's important for you to engage in it. And the reason why we frown up, and I guess I'm so careful too, because the world has has um, perverted it for so long. I appreciate you, Destiny. The world has perverted sex for so long, and we've heard it in a negative connotation. And we've always heard sex in a negative way. So a lot of times, you know, oh, let's not talk about sex. When we're in front of small children, or when we're in the church, or when we're in certain areas, we don't want to talk about sex because the world has made it so perverted. They've, they've taken it 
and done things with it that it should not have that should not have been done and i know that's even for my life because i was in a world of sin because i was fornicating um and things of that nature sex was like oh my god we can't talk about sex we can't we can't do that we can't do this but when it's all said and done god created sex for the marriage sex is a beautiful thing and a thing in the confines of marriage but when it's taken out of context that's when it becomes dirty that's when it becomes nasty that's when it becomes filthy if you were in a relationship and you were fornicating with someone then you were in a dirty place you were in a in a place that was not pleasing god so then when you get married um and you're engaged in sexual uh, relations relations thank you with your husband you know sometimes it can feel dirty it can feel like oh my god and i talk about that in my book because I wasn't previous relationships where fornication took place. And even when I got my husband, although I was spiritually legal to have sex with him, um, sometimes I still feel dirty. Sometimes I felt like this is wrong. I should not be doing this. And that's because of the, the relationships that I had outside of marriage that were sexual. So we have to realize like when we get into that marriage relationship or when we have um, made a decision that we're no longer going to be sexual sexual um, as a single woman, we have to make sure that God cleanse us. We have to make sure that we're healed. And, you know, a lot of times you, you won't be 100% healed or cleansed when you get married but God it can at least begin the process in your mind and your emotions and also of course in your will so we want to make sure that when we release that person or whomever or those persons if you've had other partners in the past that we've released those people from us that those soul ties have been severed we have to sever we have to get rid of we have to cut off we have to release we have to remove soul ties we can no longer you know y'all got come on y'all y'all think about oh god look how johnny how johnny used to put it down on me or how frank used to uh you know how he used to hold me or how he whatever right because that's what your flesh enjoyed when you were in that place of your life so you have to get rid of those thoughts and you cannot expect your husband to treat you sexually like johnny or to treat you sexually like frank and sometimes those expectations will come up sometimes you'll think about johnny and frank not that you want to be with johnny and frank i hope i'm, I'm helping someone this morning you will think about johnny and frank listen not that you want to be with johnny or frank but because of those soul ties that are still resting in you that are still a part of you because a part of you are still in bondage because you gave yourself to someone else you are the woman you are the receiver the man is the giver so when you give of yourself to someone else you automatically become married my god to that person sex in the biblical days um uh, uh, exemplified the marriage when they got sex they got married you don't see many uh, or any i don't believe wedding ceremonies per se that happen in the church traditional wedding ceremony that that happens now back in the biblical days they they went into her they knew her and you will see words like that in the bible so when they talk about he went into her or he knew her that means that he had sex with her and once you had sex with somebody then you married that person that became the marriage that became the agreement at that time so many of us have have <laughs> have had had several husbands prior to the husband Many of us have had several husbands and we're still single. We're still single. So we have to be mindful of all the people or whomever, or the one person, whoever. It doesn't matter if it's one or ten. You know, sex outside of marriage is sex outside of marriage. Uh, and and, and it, it does dampen your spirit and it does put you in a place of bondage to that person so it's very it's very important that you get rid of root out root out every form or every soul tie every sexual soul tie so that you can enjoy your husband i'm telling you i ran into this roadblock you guys and i couldn't understand why i'm like okay i love my husband that's not the problem but why do i feel like it's uh it's dirty or i should not be doing this or i should you know i shouldn't be engaging in this and that was a trick from the enemy that was a lie from the pits of hell because he wanted to cause disconnection in the bedroom and remember, remember we talked about disconnection in the bedroom if there's disconnection if there's separation in the bedroom then there is <laughs> there is nothing but space and opportunity for the enemy to come in so if somebody is not being pleased you guys if I'm not being pleased or my husband is not being pleased that gives the enemy ample room and opportunity to come in and sometimes it has nothing to do with you sometimes the person the husband or even you 
may be dealing with certain issues from your past, um, whereas you cannot be satisfied or, or, or whatever the case may be, or just certain issues and, and satisfaction in the bedroom is not taking place. Maybe you are withholding because for whatever reason, and I strongly speak against that. You never withhold from your husband. You never withhold from your wife unless you agree for a certain period of time. You should not intentionally withhold your body from your husband or withhold your body from your wife because the word of God tells us that when we get married, your body belongs to your husband and your husband body belongs to you and you should not go without um, being in sexual relations with one another unless you agree and it should only be for a certain period of time unless you will fall into temptation. So we, ha we cannot give any place to temptation. We cannot give any place to the devil. We have to resist him. We have to submit to God so he can flee from us because he is coming. It doesn't matter how saved you are. It doesn't matter how much you speak in tongues. It doesn't matter if you're doing this prayer challenge. It doesn't matter if you get up at 4 or 5 o'clock every morning. It doesn't matter if you worship on the way to work, worship at your lunch break, worship on, on the way going home. The enemy will come. He is trying. He's going to try you. He's going to try to find an entryway. When you and your husband get into that argument, when there is tension, when there is a vision, he go to work and he uh, you know, may have some girls that are flirting with him or out in the world. You go to work and may have a guy that is flirt flirting with you out in the world. It can come so easy. And before you know it, you can fall in the place of temptation and you can fall in the place of adultery. So we want to, we don't want that to happen. <laughs> we don't want that to happen. So before we get into the marriage relationship, if you're already there, that's fine. Go on a cleansing. Ask God to, I had to ask God to detox detox a, a specific person from my spirit in front because I was with this person for so long you guys I hope you're hearing me out there I was with him for so long so I was a part of him and he was a part of me because we were engaged and together for so very long and I had to ask and I found myself thinking about the person I found myself dreaming about the person and I didn't want this is the thing I didn't want to be with the person but this person was always coming in my thought world. This person was always coming in my dream world. Why? Because this person had fed me for so very long. For over a decade, this person was feeding me, feeding me, feeding me, feeding me, sexually feeding me. He was ejaculating inside of me over a certain period of time. I'm raw and I'm real this morning, you guys. I'm raw and I'm real this morning. So I found myself thinking about this person. I found myself dreaming about this person. I found myself, you know, just thinking about the sex and all these other things that 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 was a part of me and this person's life at that time and I did not want to be with that person so I had to ask God to cleanse me I had to ask God to renew my mind constantly and I had to go on a detox I had to go on a fast and I had to call those things out of my spirit call those spirits because that's what it is spirits that are <laughs> harassing you spirits that are tormenting you and I had to call those things out and I said, okay, God, no, I am only, I am, I was made for my husband, regardless of what I've done in the past, because the enemy will try to make you be, think, you're welcome, Katrina, try to make you feel guilty. I was created for my husband. And that is it. I don't care what I've done in the past. I don't care who I was with in the past. I was created for my husband. Because the enemy will try to make you look at, oh my God, because he used to tear it up. I'm just saying, y'all. I was created for my husband. He, my body belongs to him and him only. So I had to detox her and I had to, go, I mean, uh, Monique, I had to go on a fast and it was not an easy process. You guys, it was a, it was a, a pretty lengthy process that I had to go through and it started in my mind. It started in my mind. I did a teaching on the other day in our DMI group and I talked about the mind and I talked about how images and things just come in your mind. And you know why that is? It's because what we put in front of us. You know, so you have certain images that come in your, what we allow our, th our thoughts to wander on. Images, certain conversations, um, certain things we listen to. Those things, you know, our, our, our mind is like a slideshow. So those things constantly play in our mind. And uh, things that we've done in the past can constantly play in our mind if we don't sever ties. We have to sever ties with exes. We have to sever ties with our ex-life. We have to sever ties with our ex-mindset. We have to sever ties with our ex-emotions. We can no longer longer be in that place and that takes time it have yes it does yes 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 Devin absolutely and that takes time so I want to pray this morning I had a lot of notes I know we had some scripture one scripture I believe talked about um, the bed is holy and undefiled uh, and you know I, I, I 
was going to put up a post last night, but I saw Spinata post and I tried not to have us post back to back. So I deleted the post. But what I had asked in the question is, that, does anything go in the bedroom? Does anything go in the bedroom? Even in the marriage bedroom, because we tend to think that sexual immorality cannot happen in, in the bedroom. And God had dealt with me on this before because I felt like anything could go um, just on the surface. Not that we were doing anything, but I felt that anything could go in the bedroom. Um, but we have to make sure that I wrote up here, intimacy can lead to sex, but sex is not intimacy. Okay, so intimacy can lead to sex, but it's not sex. So intimacy and sex are two different things, especially for the woman. But for the man, they think intimacy, for most men, think intimacy and sex is the same thing, but it absolutely is not. And how we interpret intimacy as women and how they interpret intimacy as men uh, is two separate things. So I wanted to pray this morning on any roadblocks and any barriers in which I talked about those things. A lot of hurt, hurt from the past, um, abuse from the past, sexual immorality from the past, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, or any of those things, you see, insecurities, a lot of those things can contribute to you not being able to be fulfilled in your sex life with your husband. A lot of those things can, can contribute. You'll be amazed how many married people are not having sex on a day-to-day -day basis. And I also talked about in my book how busy me and my husband are sometimes. And sometimes I just don't feel like it. Sometimes he doesn't feel like it. We're not just humping. Like my mom, grandma used to say, humping on each other all day, every day because we can. We are very, 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 like we were so extremely tired in the bed last night. We were just talking and he was falling asleep and I was falling asleep. And ain't nobody thinking about, no, we probably were thinking about it, sex. But ain't nobody feel like that. <laughs> okay. Yes, it can, Tanja. Yes, it can, girl. I'm trying to tell you. I am trying to tell you. That's why you have to be mindful in doing activity. Let me go back to that for a minute. And doing certain activities, even in your singleness, if you're fornicating. You know, because the freak nicks out there, you can be a freak. He can be a freak. And when you are introduced to certain freak behavior... That thing gets inside of you and it gets a hold of you. And that's your expectation for your husband. And your husband may not be a freak like that, right? So you want to be mindful. He may not can touch you or taste you or make you feel the way that person makes you feel, made you feel or touched, touched you or tasted you. So that's why that's why God spoke against it so, um, so much. Yeah, and they're okay. Yeah, it, right. Yeah, Tanja, I'm, I've been there too. I, <laughs> so you know, and you have those expectations and those freaky behavior. You have to understand that that was when you were in that place that you were dirty, that you were filthy. I was dirty. I was filthy. That was not a pleasing place in God. God was not pleased with us in that place. So. What we did with whomever is no longer applicable. And we have to eradicate that from our thought world and from our emotion world. We have to sever those ties. We have to sever those spirits. We have to call those spirits what they are. Um, and you have to be raw and real. Call those spirits what they are. Call them out. And it's nothing but lust. That's what it is when they're all said and done. If you used to watch pornography with an ex or something like that. If you... Um, you were involved in masturbation with your ex. I'm hitting some houses this morning. Um, all of those things we have to be mindful of. And I talk about, you know, the busyness. That's what I was talking about, uh, me and my husband. And we have to make ourselves sometimes or just agree to certain times have sex. Because a lot of times we are dead tired. And, it, and for men, it's a mental thing. If you guys haven't realized already. For men, it's a mental thing. And when they're stressed or they have a lot going on, I mean, I know some men may use it as a stress reliever, but for the most part, when they are, they have so much going on and their mind is not even able to be focused, they're not trying to engage in sex. They're trying to fix the problem, whatever the problem is for them. They're not trying to help you. So, you know, that, oh, honey, I can relieve your stress. Yeah, he may want satisfaction, but he may not want to give satisfaction. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because for them to engage in sexual intercourse, it's a mind thing. Now, he may desire for you to satisfy him. Otherwise, wives, 
but he may not want to engage in intercourse sex. So that's why it's very uh, important that you understand him, you understand his needs, he understands your needs, right? Because listen, marriage was made for the um, uh, sex was made for marriage, and the bed is, bed is holy and undefiled, and sex was made for pleasure, and is also it was also made for procreation for you to procreate, produce, right? And guess what? Sex is not about you. Come on, Katrina. You better listen. Listen. That's a blessing, Big Tron. Listen. So sex is not about you. <laughs> as it is about your husband. It's not about your husband. Is it as it is about you. So when you're engaging in if you engage in sex, or even in the place of intimacy or even leading to sex, understand that it's to please the other person. Y'all hear me? Sex is to please the other person. It's not for you to get pleased. So my wives out there who sometimes get upset because you um, are not able to reach the climax of intimacy know that sex is not about you it's about him and he has to know that sex is not about him but it's about you so if you both go in there with that same mindset of how can I please him how can I please her I gotta get over you guys then you will find yourself in a much healthier place sexually but for us, for many of us, we view sex as selfish, right? When we feel horny or we feel like we want it and we want it good and want it now, we want it because that's what we want. But we don't stop and think like my husband, I need to please him. Even if I don't climax, I need to make sure that he is satisfied. I need to make sure that he is relieved and he should be in the same mindset. Sex is just not for us to come together and for you to climax and for him to ejaculate. That's the world's way. Hey sis, good morning. That's the world's way. So when you go in with the frame of mind, I may not climax today. But I want to make sure my husband is satisfied. If he goes in with the mind, unless you're trying, you know, to have a baby or something like that, then that's different. And if he goes in for him, and if he goes in with the mind, I'm not trying to, I'm not going in to just have a nut, to get a nut. I'm going in because I want to please my wife. I want to please her body. I want her body to feel good. Then you will look at sex at a whole totally different light so you don't go in trying to have a climax on wanting him to reach that peak point for you you go in saying baby do what you want to do right this is your body take control of it enjoy it right so we want to pray against roadblocks and barriers to an inactive um, sex life inactive or unenjoyable sex life I have here make sex a priority and engage often I'm at a light <laughs> I have here um, we're gonna pray for healing from past hurt past pain of abuse and sexual immorality we're praying against strongholds and removing previous sex partners from our life we're praying for sexual fulfillment sexual attraction I talked about that. Proverbs 5, 18 through 19 says, Let your manhood be a blessing. They're talking about talking to men. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. So our husband's manhood is to bless us. We want to pray that we, desi we desire our own husband and nobody else. Right? And we want to pray if trust has been betrayed, if, there, if fidelity has been violated for, for whatever reason... We want to pray for that. We want to pray for healing because I understand that if there were some things that were 
done in the marriage. Absolutely. If there were some things that were done in the marriage and that has caused trust to be betrayed, infidelity, um, any form of abuse or anything of that nature, and more so the woman will withhold. Um, you, you have some men that do. But a lot of times a woman will withhold because when our heart is broken, <laughs> when our heart is broken, we don't want to give of ourselves. Right? Am I talking right? When your heart is broken, you don't want to give. You don't want to give your body to him when he's violated you, when he's hurt you, when he's, it doesn't have to be cheated on you, but it could be anything when he's been inconsiderate or insensitive. The first thing you do is what? When there's a violation that's taking place, take your ring off. It said that that vein that's connected to that ring finger is connected. It goes straight to your heart. That left ring finger. So women have a tendency to remove the ring because they feel violated. They feel betrayed. Right? So we're going to pray against that this morning. And I want to say, you guys, you know, have fun. Have fun with each other. Be creative. Not boring. Right? But within the confines of the Word of God. Because I spoke earlier that even sexual immorality can take place in the marriage. So we want to make sure that we are not doing things because the world is doing it or because we can do it. We want to explore and learn, yes. But we want to do that together. Right? So we want to be in the mindset as I was a 2.0, if you weren't a virgin, I was a 2.0 virgin when I got married and I want to learn my partner. I want him to learn me. I want us to do things differently. Let's explore one another's bodies. Um, and I can tell you the deeper you go in worship, your worship life, the better and the deeper your sex life is going to be. Trust me, try it. The deeper you go in your worship, the closer you get to God in your prayer, your worship time with God, the... Um, deeper you will go in your sex life with your husband and anything that you guys decide to try or do make sure that mutual consent is given between you two both have to agree on that thing and i want to um yes absolutely don't let a, pr a temporary hurt jill says or disappointment break a permanent bond we talked about space and opportunity so get over it and get over it quick ladies don't hold on to it don't hold on to it if he comes home and, and, and he desires to be pleased or you know you know he desires to be pleased or connect to you in that way don't keep holding on to that thing don't keep holding on to that thing yes work through issues but don't keep holding on to it um i wanted to mention something about yes i wanted to mention something about anal sex <clears throat> because this is a thing <clears throat> and i was reading up on this and i've never been a fan just by the way um <laughs> but it was talking about and I had my notes to read off of it but of course on my card this morning I really can't but it talked about the majority of women that experience anal sex do not enjoy it and in fact feels violated <clears throat> I can't tell you what's right and what's wrong in your marriage that's something that you and your husband have to decide but one thing is for sure you must have mutual consent so if you do decide to uh, have anal sex or, or, or to uh, partake in that, you and, your, you and both your husband should decide on that. Should decide on that. Um, it is said that there is uh, things that happen during that, uh, during that act when you are having anal sex or allow anal sex on yourself and bacteria it talked about how the bacteria and so many other things can occur can a, occur because of it let me see if i can read a little bit the majority of women who engage in anal sex with their husbands admit that they do not enjoy it and feel violated um let's see and they were saying um risk oh, risk of bacterial bacteria and viral affections of the vagina, penis, rectum, and anus can occur. What is this word? Medical risks. Medical risks. That's what it says. Medical risks. Um, medical risks. Bacteria and viral affections of the vagina, penis, rectum, and anus can occur. And honestly, I don't believe that the anus, 
the anus was uh, created for sex. I just don't believe that because God created the womb and the vagina for that reason. Hence why the anus is tighter. It's drier. Uh, and it's in a place that I don't even believe you can feel pleasure. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> because it was never meant for that. No, the Bible does not speak in black and white terms. And we have to be mindful when we're always looking for black and white terms in the Bible. A lot of times things are not going to be don't have anal sex. Um, don't masturbate. But as believers, um, the more you, you know, the, the, if you draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. And the closer you get to him... And the deeper you go in him, in prayer, and in worship, he'll reveal certain things to you. And the Holy Spirit will confirm or deny. Oh, wow, Tanja. So Tanja said, that was a sin I was always scared to do it. Tanja said, it's, you know, it's not something you're supposed to do. And the doctor says that it can open you up for cancer. So we have to be mindful in, you know, again, mutual consent should be the thing here. Uh, mutual consent should be the thing here so if you're both not mutual agreeing to whatever it is then you should not be doing now let's go to masturbation it, yes joe absolutely it sounds painful like because it's look how small that hole is and look what comes out of it feces come out of your anus waste comes out of your anus so why then would you want somebody to and i'm not i don't want to say it like that so why would we even want to participate or practice that when we know that waste and feces come out of that. So if somebody is, if, our, if we're allowing our husbands to um, please us in that way, or if he desires to please us in that way, because that hole is tighter, right? Um, then that seems like, oh, just push all the stuff back in you. That's what I always thought about. <sighs> yes. Touch and agree. Absolutely. So we got to be mindful of that. Now when it comes to masturbation, the Bible does not speak in black and white terms of masturbation. But if there's anything that we're doing to please our own body, if there's anything that we're doing um, that is not involving our husbands, masturbation is you pleasing yourself. You pleasing yourself. We were not created to please ourselves. God created marriage for that. We were not created to please ourselves sexually. Right, trying to please a husband. Yeah, so if you're on here today and you're doing it to please your husband and you don't enjoy it and you feel violated, have that conversation with him. Have that conversation with him. him. My husband has never, we have never even thought about that. And I'm not trying to sound like, oh my God, it's so gross. But I thank God that he didn't even... <laughs> mention it we didn't even talk about that being an option ever right um i think i may have said it one time and, and he gave his comments but it's not something that we um participate in so if it is something you participate in and you don't desire it let him know right that's got to touch his heart and if it's something that he's so adamant about and and he just wants to be please, 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 please. You know, pray that God reveals to him the the purpose of sex. Let's see, belt looks weird. The purpose of sex. Um, if he's not saved, and you be able to have that conversation with him at some point, hopefully, and he receives you, uh, and understand that it's not about pleasure, just pleasure, as we've seen in the world, and just people, you know, hooking up to 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 get a nut off. It's more than that. Now, masturbation is pleasing yourself, and God never um, desired us to please ourselves. So, if we're in that place of masturbation, then we, have, we need to pray against the spirit of lust, so we're not, we don't fall victim to wanting to please ourselves because we have our husbands to do that. And if you're single, you should not be masturbating either. You should not be doing that in lieu of sex, because again, you are pleasing yourself, and God never created us to please ourselves. We should we should not be self pleasers. And nine times out of ten. <clears throat> If you are masturbating, you're thinking on something um, sexual, you're thinking on something lustful in order for you to even get to that place of, of masturbation. So when that thought comes to you wanting to please yourself, you have to immediately cast that down. Now, let's go on to pornography. Um, I don't believe that couples should engage in watching pornography or even single woman because, again, you're, you're putting yourself in a place where sexual and moral behavior can take place. And you'll find yourself uh, wanting to copy 
somebody what they're doing in the bedroom when your relationship with your husband's authentic that worship with him is authentic so you can't copy um someone else's moves or ways and and you should not definitely should not be watching it to to then go and masturbate yourself so we have to be mindful of the things you know you know we have to be mindful of the things that we look at the things that we we engage in the things that we listen to because even that sound pastor uh, bishop jackson talks about the sound that the man likes to hear even on pornography it's the sound that they like to hear from the woman groaning and moaning from the clapping of the buttocks and the clapping and slapping when he inserts his penis into the woman so we have to be mindful of what we're, what sound we're allowing to get into our ears and what we are watching um and not allowing those things to pervert us and pervert our spirit and then it calls all this perversion to happen within the marriage. I, I'm a part of another group and they were talking about, you know, sex toys and all of these things. And I can't tell you what to or what not to engage in your 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 bedroom. But what I can say is if, if, if there's any time you feel like it's a violation, if there's any time you don't feel okay with it, uh, if there's any time it's, it's causing, uh, it makes you feel like a prostitute or it makes you feel dirty or nasty or you're not consenting to it, then you need to go back to the altar of God and say okay God you know these, these are not things that I want to engage with engage in with my husband and I need to be able to share this with him because this is not something I enjoy anymore yeah when I was a little more worldly um you know it was okay for us to do certain things and to engage in certain things but now that I am understanding who you is because let me who you are is because let me tell you the closer you get the more you spend time with God the closer you get to him and the more you become like him uh the closer you get to God the more you become like him and when you become like him, you take on his attitude. You take on his mindset. You take on his character. So certain things that you may have done when you guys first got married is not okay now. Come on, somebody. Certain things that you did before you got married is not okay now because now you are becoming more like him. Right? Your character. You're becoming more like him. So because you're becoming more like him, you're not wanting to engage in certain things. And it's okay because God is going to teach you and, and share with you by way of his Holy Spirit, by way of the Holy Spirit that he has given unto you what's holy and what's not holy. So we cannot take holiness out of it just because it's sex, right? Now, I'm not saying you have to be in the bedroom with a long dress and, and all this other stuff. No, of course, you're going to, you know, look the part and do, and do those things. Put on whatever music you decide to put on. You know, um, there are a lot of romance tracks and, 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 and tracks for, you know, uh, to engage in sex and intimacy. But even with that, you guys, just don't pick any song. And we don't listen to Climb on the Rough Side of Mountain when we're engaging, um, if we put on music at all. But you want to be mindful of what song you do choose. Because just because you choose a song, a song that's going to get you in the mood or keep you in the mood, you want to make sure that those, those, ver those words that you're listening to is not going to pervert the bedroom even the more. Come on, somebody. You want y'all hear me? Make sure that the make sure that the song that you choose is not going to pervert the bedroom any any more than it is or at all. So you're not going to put on some song that's talking about hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, because you know that world that song is talking to the world and it's coming from an impure place. So you know we want to make sure that we're we're listening to if we're going to listen to any secular music during that time period and you probably would because you're not going to listen to any gospel music <laughs> during sex right <laughs> so make sure that the word the songs that you're choosing you're just not choosing a song because it's a worldly song and it, it makes you nasty and it makes you want to twerk the songs you used to listen to in the club that makes you want to get all nasty and seductive make sure yeah you make sure we're not listening to that because those words are still perversion those words are speaking to sexual and moral behavior did y'all realize that and guy got me on that one day because i was looking on youtube and you know just looking up different romantic uh tracks and just different things like that and the i just the words was like uh, -uh. although we're engaging because sex is not a nasty thing it's a beautiful thing but because the world has violated so much you know those words are just talking about violation right those words are about violation so that's our time. I'm going to pray. I'm going to get to the gate in just a minute, you guys. So I'm going to try to pray before I get to the gate. 
I'm not supposed to be on my phone, especially when we get to the gates. And then that'll be it for today. I also sent out an email and put this replay for those that missed it on the, the call this morning, that were on the call, um, and it didn't take place. So I'll put that in there for them. But let's go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this day, God. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Lord, as we talked on the subject of sex on today, God, I'm praying, oh God, that you renew our minds today. Lord, I'm asking, oh God, that you forgive us for um, behaving in ways and doing things that we should not have done in our past life or even now that has contributed to um, inactivity or unenjoyable uh, or an unenjoyable sex life, oh Lord God. And I'm asking that you renew our mind on today. Lord, anything that we thought was right, anything that we thought was holy, anything that we thought um, that was pleasing to you and it is not, God, I'm asking you to renew our minds on today. Give us a fresh perspective, a fresh way of thinking, a fresh way of doing on today, God. Help us, oh Lord God, not to be uh, consumed with the world's way, but only to be consumed with your way. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we pray that many of us have dealt with um, soul ties and, and doing things in our past life that was not pleasing unto you. And those things somehow has creeped into our marriage relationship. That Those things have somehow creeped into our existing now. And God, we're just asking for a cleansing today. We're asking, oh God, for you to detox us, detox our minds, detox our hearts on today, Lord God. We want to please you. And if there's anything that we're doing that is not pleasing you, oh Lord God, we ask that you reveal it to us now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God, if there's hurt, if there's pain that is causing our sex life and sex fulfillment with our husbands to be avoided, oh God, reveal that to us now in the name of Jesus. Help us to deal with those pain and deal the pain, deal with the hurt, deal with those issues once and for all so they will no longer be a barrier and a roadblock to our marriage. And Lord, I want to pray. I'm going to pray for these things on this sheet of paper. We're praying against roadblocks <coughs> and barriers. Oh God, we're praying, oh God, that we understand the, the purpose of sex and that's for pleasure and that's for procreation, oh God. And that's putting the other person first. Lord, I pray, oh God, as we go into um, sexual relations with our husbands, that we understand it's about pleasing him and not about pleasing us. So then we pray against selfish behavior of wanting it to be one-sided, of only thinking of ourselves. God, we need a renewing mind on this morning. We need you to take control of every fiber of our being on this morning, oh God. Any violation, God, it should not prohibit us from enjoying our husbands. It should not prohibit our husbands from enjoying our wives, from, from enjoying their wives. If there's anybody on here that's withholding, that any, anybody that will listen to this live, that's withholding from their husbands because of hurt, because of pain, oh God, I pray that they no longer do that after today. I pray, oh God, that they settle the ties. They settle the issue. They settle the problem so that they can be fully and... I don't know how much you guys heard. I think my connectivity went off. Absolutely, Kara. Did you guys hear the prayer? <laughs> I think my connectivity went off. All right, so this was one interesting morning, but I pray that many of you were blessed by the teaching, and I pray you, I hope you heard the prayer. <laughs> if not, continue to pray on this subject today, and um, I already stated things that we're going to be praying on, so just put that in your prayer uh, rotation on today, and blessed in a beautiful day. Love you all. Have a great day. All right. Talk to you soon.